Factsverse presents 13 Unbelievable Things You Didn't Know About the Medieval Era Number 13. The bubonic plague caused by the Bacillus Yersinia pestis was brought to Europe by merchant ships in 1347. The Black Death became the worst pandemic the world has ever seen. Spread by air plus rat and flea bites, a healthy person could go to sleep at night and be found dead in the morning. The disease caused fever, starvation, extreme pain, and mysterious black boils that oozed pus and blood, hence its name. An estimated 75 to 200 million people died before the pandemic ended in the 1350s. Number 12. Chastity belts were worn by wives when their husbands went to the Crusades, often for years. The belts assured a wife's faithfulness and protected her from rape by predatory men at home. Made of metal with padded linings requiring frequent change, they were impractical for long-term wear. Such wear would cause abrasive injuries, urinary infection, sepsis, and death. Some historians now believe this is a myth because there is no credible evidence the belts existed during the Crusades. The first evidence of their existence is during the Renaissance. Number 11. Many pieces of medieval literature were written by anonymous. This is because manuscripts were often retellings of the stories created by others, notably of respected classical authors and church figures. Authors rewrote stories they had read or heard instead of creating their own. The names of individual writers were less important in those cases. Number 10. Food in medieval times was an important marker of one's social hierarchy, and there was a correlation between the one's work and food. The laboring class's food was coarser than the elite's, laborers only requiring coarse food. Rye bread held a low social value and so was eaten by the poor. Grain shortages were common with food scarce, so they made rye bread from a fungus that contained old rye. Unfortunately, it was poisonous and could cause death. Number 9. Medieval cities were small and crowded. The main street might be cobbled, but roads were bare dirt and frequently muddy. Chamber pots emptied out the windows, animal dung and rotten food was thrown into the roads. Heavy rain flushed away refuse, but light rains only made roads worse and streets teemed with rats. London daily produced 50 tons of excrement. Number 8. Probably you didn't know the height of footwear fashion for the aristocracy in medieval times was long-toed shoes called poulains, pigage to the French. These pointed toe shoes were stuffed with hair, wool, or moss and could be half again a foot's actual length. Tradition says the style began with the shoes of Count Falk of Anjou, who had some kind of foot deformity, but was more probably inspired by Middle Eastern shoes seen during the Crusades. Number 7. Bulls and oxen of medieval times were about the size of calves today. Cows doubled as work animals pulling carts and plows and barely produced enough milk for their calves. Horses, too, were smaller. Goats, sheep, cattle, horses, pigs, hens, and ducks were turned loose to forage for their own food much of the year. Grain shortages starved the animals as well as the people. Number 6. The Middle Ages common people wore their hair short. The heads of serfs were shaved as a sign of servitude. People of rank wore their hair long and flowing. Knights were sons of noble families, and so they also wore their hair long. The notable exceptions to this custom were the Knights Templar. Male courtiers of William II were accused of being sodomites due to their long hair, so the Templars cut their hair short and kept it that way on pain of punishment. Number 5. Medieval monks practiced tonsure, shaving the tops of their heads. Barbers were required, so each monastery hired or had to train one. These barbers trimmed hair plus performed ritual bleedings and minor surgeries, like extracting teeth. 
They often lived in castles with noble families as well. It was common for barber surgeons to treat injured soldiers with their sharp blades, even doing amputations. Physicians considered surgery as being beneath them. The red and white barber pole today represents the bandages and blood of that ancient role. Number 4. Medieval archery was one of the era's best weapons. Archers were often the deciding factor in winning a battle. For this reason, they were awarded special privileges. Henry I enacted laws protecting archers who accidentally killed someone during practice from criminal charges. Longbows were incredibly difficult to master because of the force needed to penetrate armor, so he required all able-bodied men to use their leisure to practice and learn archery. This ensured his supply of archers ready for war. Number 3. Football games, called mob football, played in the Middle Ages were between neighboring towns. With few rules and unlimited players, any method of moving the ball was allowed short of manslaughter or murder. These matches were often chaotic, causing injuries, even death, and property damage. Edward II, concerned the game was distracting his soldiers from practicing their archery skills, enacted a 1314 law banning it. He was the first but not the only king to do so. In France, King Philippe V banned ball games in 1331. Edward IV upheld the ban with the archery law in 1363, requiring all able-bodied to practice archery for two hours every Sunday. Number 2. Medieval society considered torture an acceptable means of interrogations, punishment, and execution. The type of torture used depended on the social status, gender, and crime of the victim. One brutal fact about medieval-era torture was its intent to inflict as much agony as possible while keeping the victim alive as long as possible. One method was saw torture. The person was sawed in half, either vertically or horizontally, usually with a cross-cut saw. Coffin torture placed the victim in a metal coffin cage that was hung up on public display, inviting abuse by angry citizens. Other methods were the iron chair, pair of anguish, and the breaking wheel. Number 1. Animals in the Middle Ages were accused, prosecuted, and punished for their crimes, which ranged from criminal damage to murder. Tried in both secular and church courts, the practice continued until the 18th century. The usual criminals were farm animals or pests like weevils and rats. In church courts, the animal was provided with a lawyer, just like a person. In one case, piglets and their sow were tried for murdering a child. The piglets were acquitted, but the sow was found guilty. Convictions typically led to execution. Subscribe for more!